Good morning all. Welcome back to English time. How are you doing? Yes, you are all fine. Okay. Today we are going to a new lesson titled Polia. It is not related with this media, but it is a very interesting story. It has a connection with the media, but it is not a lesson which is explaining the like previous lessons. We discussed about messaging, then radio, television, computer and all. But here, for today, we are going to discuss a very interesting story. It is written by Mikhail Sochenko. Mikhail Sochenko was a Soviet author and satirist. First of all, let's discuss about the profile of our writer Mikhail Sochenko. Uh, he was a Soviet author. Soviet means yes, USSR. Nowadays, Russia. Before 1986, nowadays Russia was known as Soviet Union, USSR. But you must have studied in the SS Union of. Soviet Socialist Republic that is what USSR then because of some political policies it was divided into or that big country USSR divided into 15 countries and now one among them is Russia but here Mikhail who was born in 1895 and died in 1958. So, till his death, Russia means it was USSR. After uh, 1986 only, it was divided. Okay, so that is what about that country. So, he was a famous author and a satirist, means a criticizing person. He criticized the problems and uh, society in, in Russia at that time. Many problems were there. So he, through his novel, he criticized that all. He was a member of the famous group of writers calling themselves the Serapian brothers. So at that time there was a union of writers that is what called as Serapian brothers. So Sochenko wrote a series of children's short stories. So he was famous as a writer in children's literature. So here also it is a story which is written to the a category of children's literature which is very famous so that is what about the profile of Mikhail Swachenko so you have to write down the profile of Swachenko that is what is today's first work okay so let's go to the lesson in this fast growing world literacy is quite essential Ah, in this modern world, you know, literacy. What is mean by literacy? Ah, that particular situation when a person can read and write. That is what known as literacy. If you are a literate, means uh, you know how to read and write a particular 
language okay so literacy is quite essential in this fast growing world if you don't know how to read you will not be able to uh, get a job or live in this world even if we want to uh, operate one mobile you know we should be literate if you don't know how to read uh, you will not be able to yes use even a mobile phone okay so but we know there are a lot of people who cannot even read and write but in now we are in 2020 so education is given for all children freely in most of the democratic countries so it is a right of children so uh, parents they do not want to spend money for this education system so that especially in kerala we send our children to school when they reach at their sixth age age 6 even uh, we send our children by for a fourth age itself into kg section play school is also there but that is what the condition in kerala because in kerala is a 100 percentage literacy is there in kerala but at the same time in some uh, states in india and some countries in this world people in those countries they do not go for go to school and uh, they do not get education there are many problems but what are it may be literacy literacy is very important we must think of ways to help them so if a person doesn't know how to write and uh, read we should help them we should help them to not to read what just uh, reading and uh, if he gets a letter uh, we go and uh, read means it is not correct that is not i am telling we have to teach them how to read and write then he doesn't want to depend upon others for reading or writing a letter or i said this one okay so here is a story that tells you about the importance of being literate so here we are going to discuss a story in which or other mikhail who teach you the importance of literacy if you are an illiterate literate opposite illiterate if you are an illiterate or if, a, if there is a person who is illiterate he will have some problems not only for reading and uh, or uh, getting a, a job but in our common life in our ordinary life we can say in our ordinary life itself we will face a problem if we are not literate so the best example is given for you by writing this lesson mikhail who teaches you a very important lesson okay so go to the let's go to the lesson polia that is what the title polia polia means ah that is a name let's discuss who is polia what is the problem with polia and uh, what is the story of polia okay polia was an illiterate woman so who is polia tell me who is polia ah yes polia was an illiterate woman what is mean by illiterate ah opposite of literate that is what illiterate illiterate means does not know how to read and write so polia is a woman who does not know how to read and write she couldn't even write her name just you think about that sometimes it may be uh, unbelievable to you but such people are so there but this one happened 
before or he wrote this story before 1950s okay more than 70 years ago so at that time so many illiterates were there in this world okay now it is not there uh, but some are there okay okay then polia's husband who was he Polia's husband, however, was a responsible government official. Ah, then who was her husband? What was he? Ah, her husband, however, was a responsible government official. Ah, her husband was a government official, a government worker. But his wife, Polia, who was an yes, illiterate. He had once been a simple peasant, but five years in the city had taught him a lot. Not only how to write his name, but also how to be a successful officer. Ah, so he had once been a simple peasant. Ah, he had this uh, husband of whom Polia once upon a time, or once he was what he had been a peasant. Peasant means a uh, landless worker in the agricultural field he was working for others by uh, getting a wage or a coolie we can say he was a worker in in were in agricultural field or in uh, uh, factories or something like that but five years in the city so he went from bar uh, he uh, reached in city he worked there as a peasant in that city uh, that life five years life taught him a lot he learned many things uh, you may think uh, we can learn only uh, important things from textbook that is a part we learn many things from our life when we meet first people uh, when we go to a place uh, we uh, we learn many things so from that five years life in that city he learned a lot who learned a lot yes Polia's husband not only how to write his name uh, among them he learned one important thing not only how to write means before coming to that reaching there in that city he was also an illiterate but after reaching there in city and uh, working in city he might have seen many people who are uh, working in the offices government offices and getting or uh, uh, drawing uh, big salaries and living happily he must have seen that all then he also must have thought about such a life so what happened so that life learned taught him not only to write his name but also how to be a successful officer he observed others observed the people who are working in different uh, yes government offices and uh, he learned how did they become uh, such an officer he understood they were literate and they learned and they must have attended uh, exams and got degrees and also much must have attended the interviews and must have become successful officer so he too thought like that and also he aimed to become same like that so what happened yes after that he learned how to read and write and uh, got degrees and also attended the uh, entrance examinations or uh, examinations for job and he won that examinations and became a government officer so he must have uh, married polia before he was becoming a government official okay however he was not very happy to have an illiterate wife Ah, then you know after becoming a uh, government officer he was not very happy with what to have an illiterate wife 
Ah, he was a government official, and uh, you know uh, his friends and his really his uh, workers in that office. Ah, his uh, co-workers will ask about her family, and uh, it was a shame to him to say that his wife was illiterate. So he was not happy with that Polya's thinking. She was not interested to learn. She was illiterate. Polya, you ought to at least learn how to write your name. He used to say to his wife. Ah, so Polya, he reminded many times. Again and again, he reminded her, his wife, Polya, what you know, Polya. You ought to at least learn. You ought to. Ought to means we uh, do not cumble. Uh, we say it as it is as a responsibility of that person. You ought to learn how to uh, write your name means uh, it is your responsibility. I request to you. It is your responsibility to uh, learn how to write your how to write uh, her name. At least that you have to read. You have to study. But because it is a shame to me. How can I say that my wife doesn't know even to write her name? It's a problem, no? Yes. So he faced that problem. So he uh, he couldn't cumble he, uh, his wife because then that may be a problem. So he used to say, Hey, Polia, just uh, you uh, uh, spend some time and uh, study how to write uh, at least your name. My last name is an easy one. Two syllables. Kachkin. And still you can't write it. I wish you would learn. Ah, my last name is an easy one. Two syllables. Uh, two syllables. Two letters we can say. What is that? Kachkin. Even she doesn't know how to write this. Kachkin. So if she receive anything. Uh, on the name on behalf of her husband she has to write down and it keep signature but she was unable to do that so it was a shame to his uh, to, it was a shame to whom yes Kachkin or our husband uh, Polia's husband Polia used to wave it aside ah, then what was the response to this uh, request of her husband by ah uh, yes by Polia, she said. But Polia used to wave it aus outside. Wave it means wave it outside means avoiding. She did not pay any attention. Ah, uh, who are who is going to study, learn how to write and uh, read? I, I don't want to learn and I uh, don't want to learn how to write and read. I don't want. I have no interest. Who said like this, Polia? There is no use in my trying to learn it now, Ivan. Ah, there is no use in my trying to learn it now, Ivan. So now you got an idea about the name of her husband, Ivan Kachkin. So he said, hey, she said what now? Hey, no use. No use in trying to learn. Why? She would answer. Every time she would answer like this. Every time who uh, Ivan uh, remind her to read to learn how to read and write she would say this answer hey no use i'm getting old my fingers are getting stiff why should i try to write now ah, then she had her own excuses what did she say no at that time she used to say what now oh i am getting old ah i am getting old i'm going to become an old woman uh, and my fingers are getting stiff uh, my fingers are getting stiff means uh, becoming rough means when we are getting old our uh, uh, what fingers all will be what not possible uh, stiff stiffness or rough we will be uh, my hands are rough why should I try to write now let the young ones learn how to read and write uh, then she said what no uh, she uh, made a suggestion hey, why should I learn uh, let our children Learn how to read and write. 
I am getting old. No use to uh, read and write. Nothing. Then what? Then uh, Ivan couldn't say more because he was an educated person. So uh, then if he says anything, there will be a quarrel between uh, Ivan and uh, Polia. And that would result in what? Uh, what? Uh, bad result. So po who Ivan stopped that talking there. Polia's husband was a terrible busy man and did not have the time to argue with his wife. Ah, actually, what Polia's husband was a terribly busy man. Terribly busy means very busy, that only. Very busy man and did not have the time to argue with his wife. Ah, he was very busy man. Ah, morning going to office and uh, by evening, late in the evening coming and uh, she, he may uh, have his own works. So he was not ready to spend time uh, arguing with whom his wife. So he kept his mouth shut. So Ivan kept his mouth shut. Nothing. Okay. Every time uh, he uh, when uh, used when uh, every time he what wanted to compel her wife to read and write or learn how to read and write, she used to say this answer. I am old. I am getting old. My hands are rough. Why should I learn now? Huh? Children are there. Let them read. Let them read and write. Huh? No need. Like, like, like that. Then, so from this, you must have got an idea. What? Yes. Polia's nature. What is Polia's nature towards learning how to read and write? And what was the uh, rea or reaction? Or what was the there in the mind of Ivan, her husband, about Polia's decision. He was very disappointed. Okay? So, these are the uh, but introductory part of the story. So, today you can uh, write the profile of Mikhail. Then, you can go through this first part of this polia and read it very carefully and uh, write the questions side questions how did life in the city change polia's husband how did life in city change polia's husband uh, life in uh, city changed his life by teaching what a lot and uh, he became he uh, was compelled to uh, learn how to read and write and also became a successful officer okay that like uh, second question also you can write what was polia's response when her husband asked her to learn to read and write what was her response ah yes she said she was getting old and uh, uh, her fingers were yes stiff and uh, she was not ready to learn how to read and write okay so that was her response that also you can write down okay so today this is enough next class we will discuss the turning point we discussed about the essential uh, parts of a story so we discussed the uh, introductory part then a twist will be there a change will be there something happens that will be there that will be discussed in the next class okay thank you